Hello everyone! So you know that I love going to IKEA and my entire home is basically furnished with IKEA furnitures. Today I want to review 7 different items I got from IKEA and these are things I've had from a few weeks to a few years. And I'm going to put them into two categories. The worth of categories are things I think are really worth your money and you're going to have them for a really long time. And the not worth of categories are things that I think you would want to upgrade very quickly. Of course, these are personal opinions, but number six is actually something that I found to be very surprising. So make sure you stay until the end of the video to find out what that is. So the first item that I'm going to talk about is actually what I'm sitting on right now. It's the Hemness Daybed. It retails for around $400. The reason that I like it is because it's so multifunctional. During the day, you can collapse it. It's the size of a twin bed. When you have someone over, you can extend it and then it's the size of a king bed. It also has great under the bed storage. There's three large drawers where you can put things like towels and linens, off season clothing, as well as other miscellaneous items. Of course, in order to take full advantage of this bed, you would need to have two stackable mattresses and you can get them from Ikea as well. The two mattresses will cost around $300 in addition to the bed frame. It can be a costly purchase, but I've had this for over three years and I haven't had any problems with it. One thing to take into consideration is that I am around 5'5 to 5'6. The length is pretty comfortable to me. If you're anything taller than me, I might suggest that you go to the store and try it out for yourself. One potential downside I can think of is the bed can be relatively complex to assemble. I personally have never attempted to assemble this bed myself. By looking at the way that they assemble, it's definitely not a one person job. So that's just something you might want to consider when you buy this bed. Then we have the Alex desk. This one retails for $149 and I think that's a fair price for a computer desk. The reason I like it is because of its minimalistic look as well as its quality. It has two drawers in the front which is great for organization. You can hide all your clutter in those drawers. It helps you to keep your desk surface clean. It also has a table management feature at the back, so that's great if you have a desktop computer. The length of the table makes it very spacious for one person, but you can also fit up to two people at the desk. So all in all, I'm very happy with this purchase and I think it's going to last me for a really long time. Next, we have the Rascog utility cart. I actually got this utility cart as a bedside table because I think it would look really good beside my bed and it actually does. As you can see, I got this one in my signature minty teal color. The color is actually very very vibrant in reality. It's a bit too colorful for my taste but there's nothing a filter can fix. What I really like about it is that it is such a good storage piece. I didn't realize how much stuff you can put on here but right now it actually holds all my books. The quality is great. The wheels are very smooth and you can basically trust it with heavy items. And even in the future if I don't want to use it as a bedside table anymore, I can repurpose this for the bathroom to hold toiletries and toilet paper, cleaning products. If in the future you absolutely cannot find any uses for it, you can always resell this piece because it is a very popular item. And right now on the IKEA website it is retailing for $34. And I remember two years ago when I bought this, I paid for more than $60 for it. So it's a great time to get it right now. Number four, we have the Frisera glasses. It retails for $3.99 each, which is a bit more expensive than their $3.65 line which is around a dollar per glass but I like this one because it has a really nice weight to it the glass is very thick and you can just feel the quality I don't have to be afraid of accidentally cracking it when I put too much pressure when I'm holding the glass it has re those really nice diagonal square detailing on the side as well and that also helps with grip so I think those glasses look very nice and they're going to last me for a really long time. The last item in our worth it category is actually the frame behind me. I'm sorry to say that I don't know the name of the frame because I got it more than two years ago, but I do want to show you the quality that you get for around $10. It's basically everything you would expect in a frame without breaking the bank because picture frames can actually get pretty expensive. So this one has a plastic covering over it. The plastic covering is nice because it keeps the weight to relatively low which means that you can easily hang it on the wall with a nail or you can put command strips on the back 
This one is actually great because the back of the frame is still very wide so you can put any command strips on it without any trouble. The frame is very good quality from the wood to the plastic to the backing material. Everything is very durable and it's basically made to last. This frame is everything you would expect from a picture frame. And best of all, it's only 10 bucks. Okay, so now moving on to the not worth it category. And the first item that I'm going to talk about is also picture frames. And this one, I know the name of it. It's the Riba Frames. Recently, I got three different Riba frames. These frames came as such a disappointment. I expected them to be something similar to the one behind me, you know, having a plastic covering at least. But the surprising thing is that these frames don't come with any covering. Like, isn't that the point of frames? I could be eating spaghetti or something and then the sauce just gets splashed on the art. And without the covering, I can potentially ruin the art. So if you have any expensive art, I don't recommend getting the Riba frame. One like rumor that I heard is that the Riba frames used to have a glass covering and then over the years it got changed to plastic covering and now I guess they don't have any covering at all. So when I bought the frames, I saw these plastics um, over the frame. So this is what fooled me. I thought this is the covering for the picture frame, but it's actually not because it's meant to be recycled. It's not actually a part of the product. It's just something to protect it. Whether it's the mat or just the placeholder itself, they need a plastic covering to protect that because otherwise like someone can easily poke a hole through the picture frame and just get it damaged. So yeah, they will protect the product itself, but they don't actually have a covering because there's no way to peel this off. This is meant to be recycled. It's not a part of the product. So that's why I'm really disappointed with the Riba frame. Another thing that I noticed is that the back of the frame is actually really, really thin. It's made of really cheap wood. If you do want to use command strips to hang your art, you have to cut it first and put more of it along the sides. When I was looking on the website, it does say that it has a plastic covering, but maybe they forgot to update their site because it definitely doesn't have any covering. So don't buy, don't buy the rubber frames, don't buy it. <laughs> The last item that we're going to talk about today is the Skrufsta chair. This one is a computer chair and it retails for $149, which means it's the same price as the Alex desk. But this one doesn't live up to that price at all. First of all, as a computer chair, this one is not ergonomic. The shape of it just doesn't give you any back support. When I use it, I always have to put a pillow behind my back. So it's not comfortable to sit in. Secondly, the Skrufsta chair takes up a lot of space. If you live in a small space, this is not something I would recommend because if your space is small, then you would want the chair to be like easily tucked in so that you have more room to walk around in. This one, because of the shape, you can't really tuck it in anywhere. Another thing is that the upholstery material is not very good quality. It wrinkles very easily. I've been sitting on this chair for two years, three years, and the sitting pad portion is completely wrinkled. And also on the side of the chair where you would have the armrest, it rubs up against the edge of the table very easily, which means it gets scratched a lot. So all in all, this chair doesn't function very well and also it doesn't hold up its quality very well either. So I've actually seen this chair in the garbage room of my condo multiple times. So that means other people who have this chair are also getting rid of it. This is actually a piece that you would want to upgrade very quickly. So I definitely don't recommend this Krufsta chair. So what's the verdict? I think IKEA is still a really good place to shop, but not all products are created equal. Some products are going to stand the test of time and carry you through the years to come. And some products are going to flop and make you want to upgrade as soon as you get them. I hope you found this video helpful and leave a comment below if you have a product that I mentioned and let me know what you think of it. I'm really curious about the Riba frames. Am I just unlucky and got the bad ones or are they all like this right now? If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If there's anyone in your life that is planning their next IKEA shopping trip, send this video to them, maybe it will help them out. I'm Tina Tomato, I live in a 430 square feet studio apartment and I make videos every week on small space living. If you enjoy content like this feel free to subscribe to my channel and i will see you next time bye